what was the world like after the Cold War and after September 11, 2001? Um, that's, this is part one of that content statement 32. Focusing on domestic policy. That's what this one's focusing on. The next one's going to be focusing on, and this is the last one, foreign policy. Chat content statement 32, focusing on domestic policy, is the penultimate content statement. Penultimate means next to last. Trivia. The United States faced, faces, not faced, faces, ongoing social, political, national security, and economic challenges in the post-Cold War era and following Sunship or following the attacks on September 11, 2001. The post-Cold War period and the attacks on September 11, 2001 presented new domestic challenges for the United States. Issues impacting national security include, here's what we've got to deal with today, because there's no more Soviet Union, because we're in an era where terrorism has been made possible. What What's our life like today? And this might be a little bit more relevant about eight years ago than it is today, but there's still a lot of things in here that are that are relevant. So the dynamic of balancing national security with civil liberties. For example, the USA Patriot Act. After September 11th, the Patriot Act was passed and basically what it allowed the federal government to do was to look through your phone records and bank records. And if anything popped up, if anything pinged that looked like you had any kind of connections, financial or like, you know, telephone contact, email contact with terrorist organizations, then they could find you and they could bring you to court and um, who knows what else, right? Um, and a lot of this was done without a warrant. And so there was a debate going back and forth, you know, should the federal government be able to do this? Well, they've caught and captured some terrorists or, or they've thwarted terrorist attacks by using this is what some people argue, but other people argue, no, if you want to do this, you have to have a warrant. You shouldn't be able to just do it ear itch. So USA Patriot Act, uh, it's been repealed mostly, although I think there might be some parts that are still in existence to go out there and search the web for uh, potential terrorist activity. The dark web. The creation of the Transportation Security Administration. If you've had to fly in an air, in a, on an airplane any in the past, well, any part of your life, you know what the TSA, Transportation Security Administration, does. They screen your bags. They sometimes stop you as you're going through the line at the airport and make you take off your shoes or your belt or do some kind of search. They have you x-ray all of your luggage and your carry-on items and so on and so forth. And most people think it's generally a, a hassle. Um, I remember a time when we could fly without all that stuff. You just get to the airport and just go, um, not so anymore. Maybe not ever again because of September 11th, 2001. An increase in Islamophobia or xenophobia. You know that phobia means fear. Islamophobia, fear of people who are Muslim, Islamic, especially after September 11th. That's died down a little bit, but it, it's still present. Xenophobia is fear of strangers, fear of um, foreigners, fear of immigrants. You know, for example, uh, President Trump put a ban on immigration from certain countries that had in his words, um, a history of terrorism, supporting terrorism. Uh, some people on in the other political parties said that um, he was being Islamophobic because he was just targeting Muslim countries. So they called it a Muslim ban. So um, <clears throat> that was as recently as five years ago. So four. 
increasing fears of domestic terrorism, of course, uh, not just, um, you know, September 11th style, but school shootings, um, militia groups, those kind of things as well. Um, you know, shots being fired at congressmen during baseball games. The continuing debate between the role of the state and the federal government in the political and social issues, including disagreements over. These are things that we have been debating in presidential elections for 20 years now, if not more. Um, here's what we argue about. The rights of the LGBTQ plus community. Legalization of marijuana for medical conditions or for recreation for that matter, like the state of Colorado, that the state of Colorado allows you to have mm, recreational marijuana, but the federal government says it's a federal felony, misdemeanor. Anyway, it's against the law on the national level. So like you know, those arguments are being borne out, like it's illegal here, but it's not here, but it is over there too. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's complicated. Uh, gun rights and gun control. Uh, if you've been paying attention to you know, these shootings lately, you know, President Biden has said there's certain things that he wants to try to, to do to um, stop mass shootings from happening. Racial and gender equality. And of course, health care. Should there be universal health care? expand Medicare for all that, that you know, those kind of things. So these are the things that we um, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, libertarians all debate about. And then issues impacting American economy. We debate about how are we supposed to fit inside a global economy? Are we supposed to tariff tax other people's imports coming in or have low tariffs? Are we supposed to um, sign on to climate global warming deals with other countries around the world or, or, or not? Are we supposed to, to have trade deals with China? Or are we supposed to play tough with China? Blah, blah, blah. Um, a post-Cold War decrease in defense spending. Um, during the Cold War, we spent lots and lots of money making sure our military was absolutely top-notch and had the most nuclear weapons so that we can take out the Soviets if we need to. And now there's no more Soviet Union, right? There's a bad guy over there in Russia, but... Uh, they're not communists anymore. Do we need to spend as much money as we used to on defense and military? There was a huge mortgage crisis. We call this the Great Recession back in 2007, 2008. It really impacted the, the presidential election where uh, Barack Obama got elected back in 2008. Um, the, the short version of, of this was that there were a whole bunch of bad mortgage loans given out by banks to people all across the country who could not afford the pricey mortgage payments that they were getting approved for. In previous eras, you would not get approved for a $200,000 house if you could not pay for a $200,000 house. But that seemed to not matter to people as much in the late 90s, early 2000s. And the federal government kind of let there be these crazy bank loans. And when people started defaulting on their loans, it led to a big financial crash. It was not a great depression, but it was a great recession for about five or six years. We were teetering on the brink of especially in 2008, 2009, up to maybe 2011, we were teetering on the brink of, are, are we going to enter into a depression, a, a full-fledged depression or not? And um, one of the things that George W. Bush and Barack Obama agreed on here was that the government should bail out businesses that are faltering, big businesses like the car manufacturers, like GM, huge banks, like uh, Bank of America to make sure that they're, they're too big to fail. They 
they employ too many people. We can't have these companies go out of business or else that's going to be a huge hit on our economy. And so government bailout of those types of, of, of things. So these are the things that we've had to uh, debate about. The expectation that you will come away with is that you'll be able to explain the social, political, economic, and national security challenges the United States domestic policy faced in the post-Cold War period and following the attacks on September 11th, 2001. This is a longer one. If you have any questions, let me know.